Uh, welcome to this ordinary meeting of Huntersville Council number 4468. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay my respect to the elders past and present. We thank you, Lord, for the honour of being called by our fellow citizens to this office of honour and trust. Give us grace, diligently and honourably, free from private interest or prejudice, to discharge the duties entrusted to us to the common good and as in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please have a seat. Uh, councillors, I don't think we have any apologies this evening. Are there any declarations of interest? I'll move to the confirmation of the previous minutes. Move Councillor Williams, seconded Councillor Crassoy. Councillors, is there any discussion on the minutes? Councillor Crassoy. Just a question, if I can. Um, on uh, item on page 9, 7.1, the question about notice, um, but over on page 9 at the bottom, well, about two thirds of the way down the page, Ride Area Police Command have undertaken a community safety audit, and the report noted the following. And there's there's just a blank square there. Um, just I know it's just submitted for our review and information, but I'd be curious. The image is the report, the notes from the report. It's Clarify the well, it does. missing words. <laughs> <laughs> Though I would just say that everything else in the answer to that question points to the fact that this is an RMS road and it's RMS responsibility. So I'm not quite sure why they're suggesting that council install the CCTV to monitor the area. And if it's a council responsibility, then I would hope that what we will do fairly rapidly is lobby the RMS to prioritise it, and if not this year, not just bump it to next year. It's quite a dangerous intersection and it's waited long enough for someone's attention. All right, thank you, Councillor. Are there any further comments? Any business arising from the minutes? I'll put the motion on those in favour. Uh, Against, that's carried, thank you. Uh, we move to item 4.1. The election of the Deputy Mayor. Uh, I don't think they relate to that. They relate to library services. Okay. So, uh, and I'll pass it over to the general manager. Councillor Miles. Uh, move the motion, uh, and I propose that the um, election take place by the ballot. Second. Second, Councillor Williams. Mm -hmm. All in favour? Carried. Okay, through, through Mr Mayor, um, we've received three nominations for the Deputy Mayor role. 
first nomination is um, Elizabeth, Councillor Elizabeth Crassoy, proposed by Mark Bennett and seconded by Councillor Justine McLaughlin. Second nomination is for Councillor Jim Sanderson, proposed by Councillor Ross Williams and seconded by Jim, Councillor Jim Sanderson. And the third nomination is from for Councillor Zach Miles, proposed by Councillor Ben Collins and seconded by Councillor Zach Miles. Uh, at, this point, at this point, I, I would like to withdraw my application. Withdrawn. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so we've resolved to vote by show of hands. So show of hands for Councillor Elizabeth Crassoy. Three votes, Councillor McLaughlin, Councillor Crassoy, Councillor Bennett. Votes for Councillor Jim Sanderson. Four votes, Councillor Collins, Councillor Miles, Councillor Williams, Councillor Sanderson. Councillor Sanderson, congratulations, you're the new Deputy Mayor. <laughs> Congratulations and well done. Um, any further discussion, councillors? We'll move on to item uh, 4.2. The delegation of powers to the Deputy Mayor. Move Councillor Collins, seconded Councillor Miles. Any discussion required, councillors? I'll put the motion on those in favour. Against, that's carried. 4.3 is a review of the library services. Uh, we have two speakers, uh, Dr. Ken Johnson. Dr. Johnson. Please come forward. Thank you, well, my name is Ken Johnston, and I wish to speak briefly about item 4.3, the review of the library services. I was a member of the Library Review Committee and uh, representing the Friends of Gladesville Library on that committee. At the initial meeting of that committee, we decided that whatever the outcome of our deliberations, there should be no reduction in the quality of library services as currently provided to the citizens, residents of the municipality. This was agreed as a benchmark for future discussion of options. The services currently available include a well-stocked library with qualified library staff, computers and internet. It is open for 46 0.5 hours a week. It's close to a major shopping centre. It's well served by public transport. It has specialist services such as story time and a home library service. It serves about 3,200 card holding members of this municipality, which is about 20% of Hunters Hill residents. The proposal that uh, we enter into a new joint agreement with Lane Cove offers, I think, a very different range of services. It offers a smaller range of library related activities such as story time and school holiday programs. It offers the use of a small commercial premise in the Hunters Hill village with no book collection. <coughs> it gives residents the chance to order books from Lane Cove Library to collect at a depot or have them delivered to their houses for the fee of $5. The nearest physical library will be not adjacent to the municipality, but five kilometres away in Lane Cove Shopping Centre. The option is cheap, it is true. It will only cost us half as much as what we currently provide for our library services, but its benefits, I would argue, are not remotely equivalent to the current arrangements that we have. It's not an enhancement of our library service, but a huge reduction in services available for the residents. The proposers argue that despite the fact that we no longer financially contribute to Gladesville Library, we could continue to piggyback on the provisions provided by the City of Ryde. They say that the 3,000 library users would not be handicapped in any way. I want to strongly contest that position. It's very likely that the City of Ryde will not agree to reciprocal borrowing for residents of Hunters Hill. The City of Ryde, I think, would be quite entitled to ask 
What does reciprocity gain for Ride residents from the minimal library service offered by Hunters Hill? Even if Ride generously agreed with reciprocal borrowing, I think the shortfall in funding caused by the withdrawal of the Hunters Hill funds would result in serious cutbacks to services at Gladesville Library. There would be reductions in staffing, reductions in the opening hours, the book collection would be smaller, and the access to the electronic um, library. Excuse me, just move to extend Council Williams, Councillor Miles, please go ahead. Thank you very much. So I, I <coughs> if we agree to this land code proposal, we will inevitably end up, I believe, with a minimalist, rather impoverished library service, which may not even be sufficiently uh, of quality to qualify for state library subsidies. The proposal, I think, fails to meet what our agreed benchmark was, that there be no reduction in the quality of the library services. As you know, Hunters Hill, one of the wealthiest areas in Sydney, would see its per capita spending on public library services sink to second lowest in New South Wales, something like $25 per capita, beaten only for the bottom rung by the rural town of Dungog. As a resident of Hunters Hill, such an outcome to me is a source of shame and embarrassment. And I think residents who support public library services in the municipality would be rightfully angry at such an outcome. And I would urge the councillors to think seriously about this proposal before agreeing to what I think would be a diminished service. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Doctor, I'm sorry, would you like to just stay with us just for a moment, please? Councillors, are there any questions of Dr. Johnson? Councillor Miles. Good to see you, Doctor. Um, the claim that uh, reciprocity between us and Ride would not continue under this new agreement, is that based on, on knowledge that you have of, of the arrangement? I mean, we have a, a reciprocity agreement with Lane Cove as it is, mm. with thousands of people using that library service. Yes. And we, we don't currently um, have any conflict with them, and when we use essentially their services for That's free. True. Uh, reciprocity is not, uh, councils are not required to enter into reciprocity agreements. And uh, I think the assumption is that there has to be some sort of rough equality of service provision before councils will so enter into an agreement. Uh, if, if, the council, if one council decides that there's very little to be gained by their residents from such an agreement, then I think that they might have grounds for not entering into such an agreement. That's my understanding. <coughs> Councillors, any further questions? Just a, a Councillor Crassler. Thank you. And it's actually just a, a, a clarification to the general manager, actually, so um, if I can. Um, I'm just curious, there was a uh, note about the fee of $5. Um, I don't remember reading was in, that was in there, that it would be $5 a delivery. Through Mr Mayor, that's one of the service offerings, but that wouldn't be at a cost to residents. Um, and as noted in the report, it's something that we would consult on if there was a demand for that and then how we would... And that would be a cost to council? Yes, and that's <coughs> that's factored into that... And that's factored into ...financial thank you. Thank you. implications. Thank you. Thank you. Councils, any further questions? Thank you very much. Okay. I have a full copy of my talk there, which I can leave. For you. Thank you. Um, we have another speaker, Miss Amelia Huxley. Welcome, Amelia. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Mayor and Councillors. I'd firstly like to thank you for the chance to speak tonight and for being a part of the Hunters Hill Library Working Group. My name is Amelia Huxley and I'm 13 years old in Year 7 at St Andrews Cathedral School. I was excited to be part of the Working Group because I love reading and I was a Library Monitor at Brony Park Public School last year. I believe libraries should be social places, somewhere that people of all ages can meet and have room to run clubs or games, somewhere to study in peace or participate in a study group, and most importantly, sit and read. 
For a library to have all of this, it needs to be modern and have technology that is easy to access and available for everyone to use. It needs to be in a location that is easy to get to on public transport. Earlier this year, I visited the Glazeville Library for the first time. It was not a very inviting place. There were not many people using the library when I was there. There were no spaces for group activities. There were no group meetings, or if there were, it was hard to tell. I would love to be able to meet up with friends from school to work on group projects. We only need space and Wi-Fi. If I want to browse quietly, I'd like a comfy chair where I can relax and enjoy flicking through a few books by myself with friendly staff available to help. The use of the library space can be used by everyone and meeting rooms should be provided for community groups to meet. There should be coffee nearby or parks, even schools. We also thought people in our community who find it difficult to travel and can't always make the trip to the library and how we can be able to drop off books to them so they can still enjoy the facilities the library has to offer. As part of the working group, we all came together and talked about ideas and solutions to improve the Hunters Hill Library facilities. Our goal was to create a safe, comfortable and ideal space, which I hope we can deliver for everyone in the Hunters Hill community. Thank you. Thank you. Could I ask you to come back just for a moment? We may have some questions. Councillors, are there any questions of Ms Huxley, please? Councillor Crassel. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you for um, giving your time so freely to be uh, to participate. Thank, thank you for, for having me. Working mm -hmm. group and library group. And, mm -hmm. and also for your insight, I was really impressed that you're just in year seven, right? Yeah. yeah, I was really impressed that um, within a very short time of being invited invited onto the group, you went out and uh, visited other libraries, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and something you fed back in the group that I'd love you to share with the other councillors is like looking down the barrel of uh, working towards your HSC in four or five short years, but I'm sure you're already <coughs> have a plan for it. Um, how would you, as a student, without something at the central hub in Hunters Hill, where would you study? Where would you collaborate with your mates? Um, well, like you can always like work at your house, but that can be difficult because of other family members or not enough space, and maybe your friends might live further away. And it's just like a central place where everyone can like come together, and it's easy to access for everyone. Yeah, right. Okay. And and have you visited Lane Cove Library as well as um, Bright yes, Library? Yes, I've been there a couple of times. Yeah. Right. And how? How did you find that facility? Um, I found that facility very good because it was right in the middle of like shopping centres and it was close to a lot of like main areas where people would hang around and last time I was there I remembered that it was really big and there was lots of space to sit and there was like children's sections um, and there were a lot of people there enjoying all everything the library had to offer. Which I'm guessing is how you find Ride Library at Top Ride as well. Uh, I haven't been there, but... I haven't been there, but I haven't been there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councillors, any further questions? Uh, thank you very much. Councillors, uh, there's a recommendation on page 12. Move Councillor Miles, seconded Councillor Collins. Councillor Miles, would you like to speak to this? Uh, certainly. Um, something that... Uh, I've seen in my time on council is is uh, the steady increase in fees uh, from the service that we uh, that we get from right uh, council. Um, it's something that we spoke about last term of council. Uh, it's been incremental. It's been substantial. Uh, when I first got on council, the fees were in the four to five hundred thousand <coughs> range. They've crept up to where they are today. Uh, and I think as a council, we have a duty to uh, look at the alternative spaces that we could, that we create, could create for, for the community, for what is, um, as Amelia has pointed out, quite a traditional library service up there. It's something that is ageing quite badly. Uh, you look around to the library services provided in Canada Bay, Lane Cove, at Top Ride, that format is, is slowly being phased out for newer, more modern um, Tech focused spaces, and I think that that's something that we have a great opportunity here in, in providing in Hunters Hill. Uh, it's something that certainly 
uh, we will have the capacity to do uh, uniquely, I think. Uh, and the fact that we're going to be able to get a library hub <coughs> in the municipality, I mean, in our report, which is quite comprehensive, uh, we are one of, I think, two councils in the state that do not have a library inside the municipality. This uh, uh, resolution here will allow us to have a library service within the municipality of Hunters Hill. Uh, I don't accept the fact, the, 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 the notion that uh, Ride Council, who is a, a partner in, in so much of what we do in Gladesville, is going to cut the library services off to residents of Hunters Hill in the same way that I don't uh, accept the uh, Lane Cove Library, who have, uh, we have enjoyed the use of their service for a very long time, would consider cutting the services off if we didn't enter into an arrangement with them. Uh, our library service will um, change quite dramatically in the next five years, six years, I think. Uh, the, the format of Glades for Library as it is, uh, and I, I don't think that that facility will close, I don't think that the services will drop. What we're doing essentially is adding a, a library service that's not existing whilst keeping the Gladesville Library Service and the Lane Cove Library, Cove library Services alive. So this is not just a net improvement. We're, we are going to create for residents of Hunters Hill that use the library services a new facility that they don't have access to at the moment. So I, I think that this is a, a good motion that the Working Party has gone a long way to to uh, um, you know, a position that we've come to after a very long process that, that has been quite comprehensive and the general manager and the staff, the, uh, the committee that, that sat and, and delved into this stuff came to a decision and, and that's what's recommended here and I think it's a good recommendation that it's going to uh, set us on a course of modernising and transitioning our library services into the sort of services that cater uh, not only for the traditional get a book out and put a book in, but to that tech and 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 the future looking stuff that we have to look to doing, especially for a small council council like Hunters Hill. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against the motion? I just wanted to make a point of clarification if I could, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Crassley. Through you to the general manager. Um, I just wanted to clarify that the recommendation of the working group uh, was not what's what's before us here. The recommendation of the working group was as an advisory group to council. And I wonder if the general manager, for the benefit of the council, is just because uh, Councillor Miles did confuse it a fraction there for, for the people watching and for the benefit of the councillors, I wondered if the general manager could read out what the recommendation of the working group was. Yeah. Through Mr Mayor. So the working party, the recommendation, um, recommendation the working party is contained in page 17 and 18 um, but the essence of that is that the recommended ideal model is where Hunters Hill provides its own facility in the heart of Hunters Hill and partners with another council which was 3A and the recommendation goes on to talk about the benefits of that and in having our own library service in our own LGA and um, and what that would potentially look like and the benefits of that. However, in the short term, um, there was acknowledgement and, and an imperative to secure continued access to a library service through a joint use agreement. And that was in recognition that the current joint use agreement with RIDE was extended last June, I believe, um, for a further 12 months. And it was to come to a conclusion in June this year, um, calendar year. However, because we were going through this process, that RIDE extended that deadline. So through the working group, it was acknowledged that the, in the first instance, um, the recommendation was to seek to negotiate a more favourable outcome with the City of Ryde. And there were a number of points around that that um, the working group talked about in terms of um, the re reduction of fee, greater influence of program, outreach programs, support with grants and um, free use of the library meeting room up to a, an agreed number of hours. As part of the, the process with the working group, 
There was also um, desire to offer a market comparison and as such to seek an expression of interest from um, potential other partners. And Lane Cove and Canada Bay were seen to be natural partners given proximity. And therefore, um, an expression of interest was sent to both of those councils in line with that, that direction out of the working group. It was acknowledged that whilst the preferred outcome would be a new joint use agreement with the City of Ryde on more favourable terms, if there is a more significant benefit to the Hunters Hill community, in particular financial delivered under option two, then serious consideration needs to be given in, to entering into an agreement with another council at the expiry of this agreement. And that's what led to the EOI process. Does that answer your question, Councillor? It was more to clarify the point, but yes, thank you. Uh, anybody wishing to speak against the recommendation? For the recommendation? Councillor Williams. Yes, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm aware that this is quite an uh, important issue in our community and will uh, raise a whole range of emotions and feelings in relation to something as important as a library. It is the touchstone in a community. The current library uh, provision uh, is on the periphery of Hunters Hill and is not well serviced by transport. It also, as we've heard, um, has very old elements associated with it. And when this process, I wasn't on the, the committee, but when this process first started, uh, a few, I think most of the councillors visited a place called Roads Connection, or The Connection, which to me encapsulated where library services or community focused library and processes was heading. Um, it doesn't mean you're leaving everything behind, it just means you're now building in an important new opportunity and element in what uh, community now aspires to. Um, the young people in our community are demanding more in terms of the way they live their lifestyle and the opportunities they seek in terms of a library service. We've heard that from the speaker tonight. From my own personal viewpoint, my daughter's doing the HSC at the moment, and she goes to the library not to borrow books, but a space for quiet, a space where her, some of her, her colleagues or some of her, her friends uh, <coughs> also gather and inspire each other to study. It's a meeting place, a place for them to engage, a place for them to learn and, and to advance their, their studies. And that's a very important use of libraries these days, along with as we've heard, opportunity to have meetings, etc. I think it's important, and one thing I don't think is here that, that is very important in terms of more traditional library environment, and that's to have a section or an area that caters for, for young children. Um, I think whatever we do, we need to have a young child, young children's collection. I found the only way kids really relate, young children really relate to, to books is to be able to pick them up, touch them, and feel them. And I found that with my kids and, and that was one of the real benefits of using uh, the library system was to give them a, a wide, broad cross-section of, uh, of opportunity. And I think in whatever we do, uh, I wouldn't like to see us lose that element for the, the preschoolers and the really young kids in our community to probably <coughs> physically touch and, and, and I don't think that would add much cost to what we're talking about. But having um, uh, looked at what is an exceptional report provided by the general manager, or two reports, one in context and the other being what the, uh, the direction uh, is, I'm confident that uh, staff and, and the, uh, the committee um, have uh, come up with uh, what is a workable and a very useful outcome for our community. From all the information I've got here, it won't diminish our library services. The, the, the objective is to at least maintain or improve the outcomes for our community and library services. So um, I believe from looking at the documentation and, and, and uh, listening to, uh, to the information that's been provided over the last uh, 12 months or so, that, that I'd be confident this arrangement will give our community access to a, a modern, 
um, advanced library, uh, one that would uh, locally um, engage with the community through a range of services currently provided and possibly new services to provide provide a meeting place for our, our young people and for our old people. And I'm sure um, access to the main collection uh, would be facilitated for those that are older and not uh, necessarily computer literate. So um, I think this is a, a step forward for us. Um, I don't think in the long term the Gladesville uh, facility will survive because there's a lot of pressure in Gladesville for redevelopment and as I understand it the council at some stage, the ride council at some stage may be looking to redevelop that whole parcel of land. So I think it's timely for us uh, to move forward into the future and to provide our community with the best option to not only access traditional book services but also to build on the benefits that come from a range of uh, range of new opportunities and, and I do um, refer to that ride connection uh, sorry, the roads connection as being a good example of where library services are going um, both maintaining access to traditional books but more important, providing opportunity to the future information in whatever form is provided. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak against? For the recommendation? Councillor Sanderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll start by thanking Amelia for uh, giving her vision for the future. Uh, I was a little bit younger than Amelia when I first went to the uh, Hunter Sill. Uh, Right, or right Hunter Sill Library as it, as it was known at that time. At that point in time I was a student at Hunter Sill Primary School. Uh, so I do deeply understand the connection that this community has with that library. Uh, and I sympathise with some of the views that have been given tonight. However, uh, I think uh, as others have explained, uh, we're not talking about cutting that service. It will continue. Uh, I don't think it is viable in any way for uh, uh, ride to, to decide to exclude our residents from that library. It will continue. Um, the other thing we've got to look at is that over the, those many years, uh, this council has contributed a huge amount for that library. In more recent years, I, I have some figures here that uh, come out of the, those records. Uh, at the present time, in terms of the number of uh, uh, people that are actually members of the, the, the libraries. In, uh, in, the, in uh, the city of Ryde, uh, they have uh, 50,994 uh, residents who are members of that library at a cost of a bit, about 5.7 million. That means cost per member is about uh, $112. In our case, we've got 3,228 members, this, this is on the figures given in, in the, the papers, at a cost of uh, 723,000 per annum. Uh, so that's a cost per member of uh, $223.98. We have contributed a huge amount to that library in the past. Uh, I think it's totally appropriate that we now contribute a little bit to the Lane Cove Library Service because our communities will continue to use both of those. And as, I, and as has been rightly said by other councillors, uh, this is an expansion of services. It's, it's, a, it's a visionary move into the, into the future. Uh, uh, and I, I mean, I, and, and council has taken quite some care uh, with this. Uh, th I think this process kicked off, I think we're all aware of a, as, as a council of the cost to this council of, of the library service. I think I, I, I was actually brought a, a motion to council back in May 2018 that's, that commenced this process. And that, that, uh, that uh, was resolved unanimously by council to, to look into things. Now, fortunately, you know, we didn't react or, or, or do think things too quickly. We've had plenty of time to consider. And I think now is the right time for us to make this choice. Uh, and I, I think I can assure all people who have expressed concern that uh, it will be the City of Ryde that will ultimately decide to develop that site. Uh, until such time, 
that service will continue. It will be accessible to Hunters Hill. We can better deploy our resources. One of the other things about the saving of money, if there was a weakness to this motion or the recommendation, uh, the, weak, the, the weakness might be perceived that is we, I don't think we've, anyone fully understands what services will be provided at this new location that will be opened up. But that in itself is a strength. Because uh, that, that is, if you'll allow me to finish, that in itself is a strength. Because of the funds that we are saving, this gives us, I mean, I would have liked to have had the opportunity to consult with, if there'd been more time with the community to a far greater depth. We haven't had that opportunity, but as I say, this is a strength. We are saving a great deal of funds. This gives us the opportunity to be able to consult with people. I have no problem whatsoever with putting additional funds into that resource to make it develop in the direction that this community wants. That is the strength in this process. The community can uh, guide us in what we provide in the, in, in this, uh, in the new service. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody wishing to speak Put against the motion? The motion. Put motion. Anybody for the, mo for the recommendation? Do not put the motion. Um, not just yet. Um, Councillor's got to write a reply. Okay. So anybody else wishing to speak against? Anybody for? Councillor Miles, write a reply. Uh, I, I will be very brief. Uh, only to table this document here, which is a letter uh, from um, Cameron Morley, the Manager of Public, Li Public Library Services at the State Library of New South Wales. I won't go into the entire document, but I will read that, this, that he states... The State Library advises that the best outcome for Hunters Hill residents will be to have a conveniently located and appropriately sized library building within the Hunters Hill LGA, partnering with Neighbour Council for Library System Collection Procurement along with other functions which would be recommended. If the State Library thinks that this is a good move uh, and they run an excellent service... No, that's not that's 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 it is. I'm, 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 I'm tabling this document, which is which is exactly oh, what it says. Excuse me. Excuse me. Council has got the floor. As a council, we will be at. <coughs> Thank you. The, uh, the letters from State Library, dated the 20th September, reference 59114, and it's signed by Cameron Morley, Manager, Public Library Services. And it does say a lot more than Councillor Miles has read out, and we're happy to put that together with the documents. So. Councillors, um, if there's no further discussion or clarifications, I'll put the recommendation on page 12. Those in favour? That's carried. It's unanimous. Thank you, councillors. We move on to 4.4. Item 4.4, I believe we have, a, we have our consultant with us tonight. Welcome, uh, Mr. Stephen Gray. Thank you for coming tonight from GRC Hydro. So, uh, councillors, the recommendation is on page 134. Moved Councillor Williams, seconded Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I spoke at uh, some length about this previously. It's now um, proposed that go on exhibition and supporting that exhibition. It's an important document, although it only impacts on a small proportion of our municipality, but in those areas where uh, we have uh, flooding issues, I think it's important for us to be able to articulate to, to our community uh, those issues and, and um, how they're perceived within the planning process. So uh, I commend uh, the document um, to go on to public exhibition. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Anybody, uh, do we have a second to that? I'm sorry. Yes. I think we do. Anybody wishing to speak against the recommendation? For the recommendation? Do we have any questions of Mr. Gray? Thank you very much. It looks like uh, we're done. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, I'll, I'll put the motion, recommendation. Those in favour, against such unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us this evening. Move on to item 4.5, Property Advisory Committee Charter and Membership. Move, Councillor Miles. Uh, with an amendment, if you please. 
Okay. What's your amendment? I would like to add a third point to the recommendation that uh, that two hundred and fifty thousand dollars be allocated in the 2019-2020 budget. Uh, for property development consultancies funded internally through the establishment of a property development reserve with initial funding of $250,000 transferred from Council's unrestricted cash. Okay, thank you. Just give us a moment and we'll, um, we'll type that in. Councillors, do you, do, you, uh, do you feel you understand the uh, amendment that's read out? Do I have a second <coughs> for that amendment? Councillor Crassler. Just one moment, we'll uh, get it up on the screen. Councillor Miles, would you like to speak? Yes, Mr Mayor. Um, just going through the recommendations one at a time. Um, the Charter of Council's uh, Property Advisory Committee uh, <coughs> being adopted, the only, um, the only small change that I would make uh, is... My apologies. Section 8, page 265, uh, item C. Members of the committee must not attempt to influence planning controls in favour of projects that are under consideration by the committee. I would, uh, I would probably put committee members uh, <clears throat> just in the understanding that councillors will have to uh, participate in planning decisions. Uh, to that that will influence that that um, I'll, I'll get some note, some notes from the general manager on this, but given that councillors will will most likely be making decisions relating to planning uh, in and around the areas <coughs> that, in the adoption of LEPs and DCPs and the LSPS uh, that affect that, I don't want for our position as councillors on the committee to be in conflict with uh, the. Draft Could you bring us back adopted. to the words again? Point to the words again, please. So members of the committee must not attempt to... I would say perhaps we could be amended to non-council members of the committee must not attempt to influence planning controls in favour of projects that are under consideration by the committee. <coughs> Happy to take some advice from the general manager on that, but... Uh, mm. All right, just give us a moment. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I think, think we can accommodate those words. The intention was that, that we recognise that council wears two hats. Yes. It says the property developer yes. and as the and and, and, and I, I understand the intent. I just don't want to get. Uh, I don't want that ever to have to be uh, called up on that. So is that something we could take on notice? Do I you think, think that, and look that, at that. Yeah, you can take that yeah. on notice. That's that might be wise, and we get the right words, um, and we can uh, discuss that at a. Just that. In the knowledge that council members of the committee will be making planning decisions and All right. uh, potentially influencing the way that an LEP is drafted, or uh, yep. we will be lobbied as, as is uh, fair and proper. General Manager? Threat three, three, Mr. I understand the intent. Yeah. So that intent was not to influence outside a normal yeah. planning That's process. Fine. So we'll, we'll um, find some words that actually make that clear. Uh, so happy for the. Um, the uh, charter to be adopted. Sean O'Toole's addition to the property committee as a non-council member is an excellent uh, appointment, and, and I think we're going to be very happy, glad to have him on that committee. And in relation to the uh, to the budget um, being um, allocated, I think that it's time for Rubber to Meet Road uh, to do that to get these projects kicking to to look at the property portfolio uh, in the way that we have to uh, that will come with a capital cost and I think that the uh, the uh, budget that we have for the moment of uh, um, allocated from sale of assets should be being allocated to uh, things like the property committee that have a potential income uh, generating capacity. Okay, thank you. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Cross, are you seconded that? You're happy with what's there? Yes, good. All right. Um, Anybody wishing to speak against? Not against. Clarification, Councillor Williams? Yes, Mr Mayor, not against. Um, I'm strongly supportive of uh, us getting um, external and, and expertise to look at our property and how we can best uh, get benefits out of them for the community. Um, reading the document in detail, I find there's a couple of questions or, or issues that I think may not have been covered or may 
be a bit confusing for me. There doesn't seem to be any um, relationship between the committee and the strategic plan in terms of the property strategic plan. Um, Councillor, are there questions we could take on notice? So you if you could go notice. through them, we could take them on notice yes, yes. and deal with them with the other matter at the same time? Yep. Thank yep. you. So, so it's, let's it's about how the system works rather than talking against the system. I think there needs to be some reflection on uh, the strategic planning process of the um, of council's uh, property assets and the role and the function of the committee. Um, as that leads to then how structurally uh, the committee's program is determined. Um, 4.3 I found a bit intriguing um, because it deals with um, what I find a bit unusual <coughs> that uh, a committee um, recommends its own members rather than council uh, doing that, that role. Um, normally uh, council uh, do the um, do the process. Uh, there, there, there's issues in my mind in relation to the way it's worded there. In the reporting section, there's no reference to how it reports to council as a whole, um, which I think is uh, is uh, needs clarification. Um, role in consulting the community, um, I, I would find that a problem if. Uh, if a advisory committee is doing that. Role in defining projects uh, to be considered, again, that, that stems to um, how, how that committee actually prioritises and, and do, does its business. I would think uh, council needs to have an opportunity to uh, identify through the strategic planning process and then prioritise what that, <coughs> that, that committee uh, move forward with. But they're just some um, points that, that I'm unclear about, the overall thrust of what is, is being intended here, I, I, I commend and it's something that uh, will uh, get great benefits for our community through better utilisation, uh, better consideration of the assets which Council holds. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, we have to take them on that. We'll take them on notice and work through them as a, as a group. Councillor Crassoy. Um, just point of clarification and I know you're taking them on notice um, but I would just say that um, on page 260 item 2.2a um, the role of the committee etc etc um, and reviewing council's property strategy to ensure it remains contemporary and aligned with council's community strategic plan uh, so I think that's yep and then 2.1, it talks about the primary purpose of the committee is to provide recommendations to council in relation to development and implementation of implementation of council's property strategies. So that's how we report to council. And then also on page 261, 3, 3.1, it says in carrying out that the responsibilities the committee must at all times recognise that the primary responsibility obviously for the management of council rests with council and the general manager. So there's no presumption in anything here that the committee would be making. Th at, thanks for... I know they're all on notice, but uh, I think a lot of them are actually council, already in here. Council, we're not in debate, but thank you for drawing attention to those points. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, is there anybody wishing to speak against the amended uh, motion? The motion. Anybody wish to speak for? Ready against? I'd like to speak for. I'd like to compliment <coughs> the committee as I should have done previously with the library committee um, on a, a terrific amount of work uh, so far in, in their committee work. It's been really um, very thorough again. So I compliment you on the work to date you've done. Um, Councillor Miles, right or reply? Not required. Those in favour? Um, Carrie, that's unanimous. Thanks very much. Item 4.6, Draft Community Participation Plan. Councillor Williams, seconded Councillor Crassoy. Councillor Williams. Yes, Mr Mayor. Um, we had a briefing on this prior to, uh, prior to the council meeting. Um, it is pretty self-explanatory, uh, and we are fulfilling our obligations to make it very clear as to how um, 
council will do community participation, um, and it's particularly around the planning regimes. And most, or if not all, of this is already available within council's um, current provisions. And I think it uh, will help the community identify at what level and where and what time frames are associated with participation um, by the community in council activities, particularly around that planning regime. So um, I think it will be a useful document for the community and I do commend the staff for, for yet again um, working very hard to provide a comprehensive document, although it may need some further editing, um, which uh, I'm sure will take place prior to it being released. So um, I, I commend this document for public exhibition. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Anybody wishing to speak against the recommendation? Ready for Councillor Sanson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think you must have anticipated me. I didn't think I had my hand up, but uh, look, I'll take the opportunity. I think it's great. Uh, this is in line with other reforms where we are bringing uh, all of the information together in a single place, which is very a very useful guide to people that are not as perhaps familiar with uh, planning law as uh, as others. Uh, there are similar aspects of it. Uh, you know the. Uh, uh, Lambert report, which I fr refer to frequently, has uh, recommended this in the area of uh, certification. Uh, and they, again, and another great recommendation. I hope the government gets something, does something about it. One of the issues we have with this, we're a bit limited in, where, in the consultation times. We can potentially give uh, one of the issues that there that this municipality is up with against is the the fact that we quite often get development that uh, go, ends up in the land and environment court through deemed uh, refusal because of the time that is expected and uh, perhaps or, or the time that it's expected that uh, uh, council can perform a, a proper assessment on some sometimes quite complex uh, uh, planning issues. Uh, that's a, another potential area of reform, but uh, I think this is a great step. Thank you. Anybody wishing to speak against the recommendation? Four. Uh, any further discussion required, councillors? If not, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Against? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, we go to 4.7. We had some that we might be able to move as a... We would deal with 4.7 first. Um, move, councillor... Collins, second of Councillor Williams, is that correct? Um, any discussion required? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? That's carried. That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, um, there's a suggestion we move a few of them. Councillor Williams. Before we leave that item, I'd just make a suggestion that Thank you. in the, the minutes or where this is uh, reported, that where you've got asterisks <coughs> in the table, in the day column, that that relate to the text. It is in the text, but there's no connection between the asterisks and the text. So just a uh, Thank you. clarification. Thank you. We'll make a note. Thanks very much. Now, councillors, there's a suggestion we move some items as a block. Could you have a look at the, <coughs> could you have a look at the document that's in front of you? Um, do you? Do you feel... Just hold on a moment. Let me spit it out if I can. Do you feel we can move 4.8, 4.9, 4.10, 4.11, 4.12, 13, 14 and 15 as a block? Yeah. Is there anybody that would like to speak on 4.8? Can we move 4.8? Not, I'm not doing it formally. 4.8 can be moved. 4.9, anybody wish to speak on 4.9? Yes. 4.10, we could move that. 4.11. No. 4.12? No. 4.13? No. 4.14? Yes. 4.15? No. So, councillors, um, um, I'm happy to work through them in order if you like, but perhaps we could move 4.8 and 4.14 together. Move Councillor Collins, seconded Councillor Williams. All in favour? That's carried. <coughs> So we move on to uh, 4.9, is it? Report on legal matters. Move Councillor Collins, seconded. Councillor Crassall, discussion on that, councillors. 
question. Question, Councillor Williams. Page 285. Um, maybe it's just because I'm not familiar with the terminology, but in that item, when you look at fees billed to date um, and disbursable bills to date, excluding GST, I would have thought one should have been higher than the other, not the other way around. Maybe through you, Mr. Mayor, the general manager could explain to me the difference between those two columns. Uh, Mr. Krubus. Um can I take that on notice, Councillor? Sure. Uh, basically, I'll, I'll try. That you're right. There's discrepancy there, but. Um, I might be able to help. Yeah. Um, disbursements in legal fees usually refer to outside council um, fees that have come in or um, just stationary, that kind of stuff. So it could be all number of, all manner of. So probably um, expert consultants like traffic consultants and heritage consultants as well. That's right. Okay, we'll take it on notice and we'll come back to you with a complete answer. Uh, any further discussion required? Councillor Williams. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the General Manager. Um, item on page 286902902, the one at the top, dealing with 1 to 3 Ride Road. Uh, just wondering if uh, there could be um, the, the description here um, doesn't really describe what is currently taking place on the site. I was just wondering if there's an opportunity for uh, the general manager to update us on uh, what is happening on the site at the moment and council's response to that because uh, uh, people are seeing those buildings uh, disappear in some fashion or another. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I, um, I might ask the director to give you an update because I, I understand he was talking to our legal representatives today. Um, through you, Mayor, and thank you, General Manager. Um, the time of the, this report was written, um, things were happening on the subject side, and there's more, there's more to come, and I'll brief you on that. Um, this component was that the applicant developer um, demolished part of the balcony, uh, veranda balcony on number three, and we um, took that to the Land Environment Court interlocutory injunction, and we won and the commissioner or the judge of the day um, gave uh, gave orders that the person had to rebuild the balcony on number three. That's the one closest towards um, the Hunters Hill Hotel. Also, we were allocated um, $23,000 for court costs. While that was uh, pursuing, um, it was brought to our attention that the applicant developer also started the works on number one and further works on the subject site. When we further investigated that, there was no construction certificate. Um, following that, we went on site, we did our investigation, we got our lawyers involved, and um, we further got an undertaking last Tuesday that all work cease from the applicant developer. As a consequence, there was some um, clarification. I was on site there on Wednesday as well, and now there's a clear undertaking by the applicant developer that no work is to uh, happen on the subject site, one to three. Un only, only the uh, rebuilding of the balcony on number three is permitted under the court orders. Uh, my understanding that the uh, owner um, has um, is anticipated to lodge a construction certificate uh, in due course. Uh, and having said that, we are still investigating the matter with regard to the amount of works that have happened on site on number one and at the rear of number three. So that is an ongoing investigation and we're still talking to our lawyers, what actions. It's a very serious <coughs> matter because if they breach the court order on the subject site, it, um, it is a, um, it's a breach of, um, uh, um, it's a contempt of court proceedings and that's not, it's a very serious matter. So that's where we are at the moment and I'll provide you a clear briefing on that in, due, in very, very shortly. Thank you. Uh, any further queries, Councillor Crossway? Uh, just one other um, note um, through you, Mr. Mayor. The last item, so on page 289, um, it says that there was a hearing on the 13th and 14th of February Three, 2019. It's should, should be that date to say 2020. Yes, that's right. 
Councillors, any further? Councillor Sampson, query? Uh, yes, just one more uh, on the bottom of the table on page 287 in relation to 6464A High Street. Uh, final sentence, draft notice of intention drafted and sent. A bit confusing, I presume that means that the a notice of intention uh, to serve a notice has been served on the, uh, uh, the uh, owners of uh, number 64. Through you, Mayor, that's correct. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there are no further questions or comments, I'll uh, move the report be received and noted. I'll move that. Councillors, all in favour, that's carried. Thank you. Um, move to 4.10, tabling of pecuniary interest returns. Move Councillor Collins, seconded Councillor Miles. Any discussion required, councillors? I put the motion. Those in favour, against, that's unanimous. 4.11. The minutes of the Gladesville Main Street Committee. Move Councillor Crassoy, seconded Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor Crassoy, would you like to speak to that? Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd actually, but on, on both of these sets of minutes, I, I wonder if um, Council would consider um, deferring uh, each of them reports to the next meeting. This, uh, When these papers came out was the first time I had seen the minutes and the members of these committees haven't seen them yet. I have quite a few corrections to make in them, um, which I think would be laborious to do here in Council. So you're moving that we defer this item completely to the next meeting. Okay, so all in favour, councillors? That's carried. Thank you, Councillor Crossley. The next item we've got is 4.12, the minutes of the Hunters Hill Main Street Committee, 28th of August. Yeah. Move Councillor Crassoy, second to Councillor McLaughlin again. I think to, to, to defer. To defer. To defer. Move to defer. Sorry, Mr Mayor, there are recommendations here. Is that going to affect the recommendations at all? Probably not. Allocation of fund and public science for public signage. Councillor Crassoy. No, that's why I asked. No, not concerned about anything there. Um, okay. Are any further queries? I'll put I'll put the recommendation. Those uh, the recommendation is to defer. All in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. Four point one three. Minister of the Huntersville Levesne Friendship Committee. Move Councillor Williams, seconded Councillor Miles. Councillor Williams, anything you'd like to? Councillor Williams. Yes, Mr Mayor, there's a couple of issues here that I think Council needs to be um, uh, aware of. Um, <coughs> the obvious one is the great success which the, uh, pre, uh, the um, just finished program was. And again, I, I commend it to anybody in our municipality to be engaged and be involved because it is a significant change factor in these these children's lives. They they, they change dramatically, and the um, responsibility and, and the um, growth which you see during a very short period of six weeks multiplied by two another six weeks when they're back in the other families and they make lifetime friends out of it. So I commend the program uh, completely as as something that uh, our youth should be involved in. They're currently um, organising and pairing uh, students, and there's quite a large number of students for this year's program, which will kick off when the, the students leave in December for their six-week stay in, in Europe. One, one um, concerning issue that, that came out of last meeting, which I, I find a bit perplexing, is that the Education Department has now uh, advised that state schools will not be involved in this program anymore um, and quite bizarrely uh, we're now prohibited from using the word exchange so the committee is looking to call the program the student cultural program and I just can't for the life of me understand uh, why a state entity would um, preclude its students from what is clearly a very valuable um, program 
for, for students. And um, it, 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 I, I'm just, I just don't know why they're doing that. But as we go forward, unfortunately, the state schools are now excluded from the program. Um, I just thought councillors needed to be aware of that, what I would call rather bizarre um, position taken by the Department of Education. It's nothing against our program as such, but it's a policy position and decision by the state uh, agency or the government. Um, and, but it, but it, I, I'm at a loss as to, to how they came to that conclusion and without considering the needs of students or the opportunity for students to participate in these type of programs. Anyway, having said that, um, I congratulate the uh, committee on their, their great work and um, look forward to successive programs. And there's a lot of students wanting to go this year and I'm sure that'll continue into the future. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, I attended the Department of Education with the Vice President of Louisiana and the advice we got was uh, under their current rules, students need to study for a full term, something 11 weeks. Our program doesn't extend for that long. And so we fall outside one of their rules, perhaps an arbitrary rule, some might say. But that's uh, that was the main reason they gave when we spoke to them. Requiring us to take out the word exchange still surprises me that they won't allow us to use a word, but it's a word that they seem to have um, um, made their own, best I could say. Um, there is an opportunity to get involved with these students at the uh, farewell dinner each year. And although this is not a committee of council, it is a committee that operates under the auspices of council. And I'd, I'd recommend it to you, if you can make the farewell dinner each year, please come to it. It's a really great event. And we get students speak for a couple of minutes each on their experience of being in Australia and being with their host families, what they've learnt. And it's really quite surprising as Councillor Williams, we see them in the beginning, we see them at the end of the program and they're quite quite advanced by the end of the program in terms of their English and other things. So if there's no further discussion on this, I'll, I'll put the recommendation, receive a note. Those in favour, that's carried unanimous. Um, 4.11, Councillor Collins, seconded Councillor... 4.14, sorry, excuse me. Councillor Briefings, Councillor Collins, Councillor Miles, any discussion? Councillor Collins. Just um, <coughs> some of the names are mixed up here. I'm just, I'm, um, I was an apology for the first one um, and also for the second one as well. And I think Councillor Miles is listed twice. And I was not an apology, so I can confused Councillor Collins and I. Oh. <laughs> All right. We'll make that amendment, thank you. Any discussion required? Councillor Williams. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll just um, make the observation that uh, we're slipping back to providing minimal information as a result of those uh, briefings. We did get to a stage where there was some more uh, information available to the community as to what was discussed. We're now back to uh, one-liners and whatever. And I think uh, there's an opportunity for us to communicate some more detail to our community as to what those deliberations or discussions, not discussions, those uh, briefings were about. All right, good suggestion. Thank you, Councillor. Let's take a note on that. I'll put, them, I'll put the motion. Those, those in favour, against, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, 4.15 is a uh, report on outstanding matters. Council, Councillor... Oh, Who have we got? Collins. 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 Councillor Collins, Councillor Williams. Sorry, I was looking the other way. Um, any discussion required? Council, Councillor Collins, would you like to speak? Uh, yeah, a couple, um, a couple of quick questions. Um, uh, well, actually, an update. Probably the, for, uh, item number 1019 on page 320, Pedestrian Safety at Brony Park Village. Um, that, that actually went to local traffic committee on um, on last Thursday and, and was was endorsed to go to the next stage, which I think is design stage before it comes back to council. Is that, is that right? Is that, uh, I'm sorry, council. through you, Mr. Mayor. Got to come back to council. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the minutes of the traffic committee will come to council. 
Oh, but the um, but the um, so I understand that they're now doing detailed design. Is that right? With on ride side, is that right? Well, we'll progress to the detailed design stage. Yep. Okay. Um, as soon as the minutes are adopted, the minutes um, haven't been circulated to the traffic committee members yet. So, okay, the so endorsement of the minutes. What would the timeline be on that then? I'd have to speak to our counterparts at Ride. They've engaged the um, the contractors, so okay. I can come back to you with that. Okay. Um, the next one uh, on page 321, the crossing of Mary Street, um, 11819. Uh, that also went to the committee on Thursday. So, um, and that was that was unanimously endorsed. So what, what would the next stage of that be? Uh, through Unistamir, the same process. So it'll be reported to the, the minutes from last Thursday's meeting will be circulated to the traffic committee for mm -hmm. review. And then they'll be presented to the October meeting of council. October meeting. Yes. Okay. And then, um, and and is is that to decide whether to go ahead, or has that already been done? Yeah. Been a bit of back and forth. Council. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Mayor, um, to the director. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, the process is the traffic committee will make a recommendation to council by Which extent. They have. Yeah. And then council, once that's adopted. We will enact the application of council. Okay, so that'll be next. Okay, great, fantastic. Um, and finally, um, on page 322, um, which is Reby Road, um, so the committee have uh, recommended um, building the footpath on the western side, so, um, and also the, the, um, the uh the other traffic measures so would that come to the next to the october meeting as well yes it that does. recommendation it does they're okay, all the fantastic. same okay all right great fantastic thank you thank you councillor sanderson yeah, just one small item uh at the table at the, on page uh, 318 uh bottom item woolwich party there's one matter that relates to that is that some time ago we were going to go through the process that will allow us to impound boats. I believe it's coming up, but I hope it will be soon because I I did research that quite well uh, some time ago and I, I spoke to the uh, uh, you know at the precinct meetings about that both at Woolwich and also uh, at Henley where it does have some impact. Uh, so it is a bit of an embarrassment to me personally that we haven't gone further with this. So could we get a, a, an update on when that will come to council? Sorry, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, work is underway, so it will be coming back before the end of the year. So it's, it's currently being actively worked on. Any further queries, councillors? Oh, one more. Councillor Collins? Um, the safety order. Um, I oh, know it's probably forgotten, but no. is it on there? Um, bring this to me. We do need to bring that report. Bring that report back. With, um, yeah. All right. Yeah. October. Yes. Okay. Councillors, any further discussion? I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, against. That's unanimous. Thank you. Any further? Any further business, councillors? Um, just before, do you, does anybody have any questions without notes? Before you pass them up, if I could uh, thank Councillor Collins for his work as uh, Deputy Mayor over the last 12 months. Also, uh, Councillor Collins was um, a representative on NESROC and worked very hard on NESROC and uh, was elected Vice President of NESROC and uh, served NESROC as well as our council while in the last 12 months. Thank you for your committee work over the last 12 months, the things you've been involved with. Much appreciated. And you, and for your advocacy for safety in the municipality. It's appreciated. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Appreciate um, Any further discussion? Oh, yes. Um, importantly, it's, uh, it's the last night for uh, one of my favourite people, um, Wendy McGurk. So, um, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Um, I'm sorry that you won't be with us in the future. I hope we can still call on you. Please leave your mobile number with us. <laughs> um, and it's been an absolute pleasure. You're a delight to work with. Thank you very much. Councillors, anybody wishing to comment? 
Councillor Crashley. I would just like to wish Wendy, um, I haven't been on council very long, but we've been very fortunate to have your support and patience. And I would just like to wish you very well in your retirement, Wendy, to you and your partner. May your travels take you far. Thank you very much. No, I guess, I guess, so we've well, been seven years with us, isn't it? It's been, it's been really wonderful working with you and your boys. We're very diligent and can always count on you whenever we need to. So do leave your mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Don't leave your mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Williams. Yes, I also like to extend my uh, thank yous for your service to the Council over many years and also wish you a, a most uh, enjoyable and happy retirement. Um, I'd just like to sort of make an observation of your um, resilience and, and your agility in the role that you've taken by attending the council meetings and conducting our minutes process live and also on a program that probably isn't as friendly as people would like. So thank you for taking on that challenge and all the best in your retirement. All those in favour? <laughs> That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a formal vote of thanks from the council. Thank you very much. So if there's no further business, if you stand up your questions, meeting closed, 8.45. Thank you, councillors.